Catherine Walters here and welcome back to my channel. Viking wire knitting is a versatile wire working technique and if you've been working your way through some of my videos by now you know you can create a beautiful chain using that wire technique. However that's not the only thing you can do with it. Today I want to show you how you can use Viking wire knitting to make a pendant and specifically how to knit inside a pendant frame. So there will be two steps to this video or this video tutorial. Part one will focus on making the frame and part two will focus on filling the frame with wire knitting. I hope you'll join me. Catherine Walters here again and um, today's video is all about how to make pendants using Viking wire knitting. In particular, how to fill a frame with uh, Viking wire knitting. Um, before we get started, I actually want to talk about pendant frames for a second because um, one of the things that needs to be taken into consideration is how big a diameter you want to work with. Now when you're thinking about that, you need to think about the gauge of the wire that the frame will be and the gauge that the interior wire, the wire you will use for the knitting will be. I make a lot of pendants about this size. That's about an inch in diameter. And I typically use a very fine wire for the knitting, 28 gauge. Today I thought I would continue working with 26 gauge since that's the wire, the size wire you needed to make your uh, Viking wire knitting out of. So I've sized up the frame. This is about an inch and a half in diameter. That's about as big as I would go using 16 gauge wire, which is the gauge wire I've used to make the frame and that I'm going to show you um, how to make this in a couple of minutes. But before we got underway, I just wanted to explain uh, the importance of taking those two factors into consideration. The gauge of wire you intend to use for the frame and the gauge of wire you intend to use for the knitting. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna work with an inch and a half wide frame and we're going to use 28 gauge, sorry, 26 gauge wire, which is the same gauge wire that you knit with um, to make your length of Viking wire knitting chain in the previous episodes. So I'm going to show you how to take a piece of 16 gauge wire that you've cleaned and I'm going to show you how to straighten it out and then how to create this frame shape. Don't go away. Okay. I'm going to have the list of uh, tools and materials that you need in the description box below uh, to save us a little bit of time as we're doing this today. Um, I've cut off a piece of uh, copper wire here in 16 gauge and it's about 8 inches long. I've chosen that length because I'm using, as a mandrel, this pill bottle. And I explained in a previous video, which I will link below, um, how empty containers like this that you might have around the house make wonderful mandrels, especially for pendant making. So first thing I'd like to do, show you how to do is how I straighten out wire. Now 16 gauge, you can, if you've got some nylon jaw pliers, you can pull it through your nylon jaw pliers and that will help. But that can get a little dicey simply because um, wire is slippery. It's been cleaned, but it's still got a bit of a curvature to it. If you find it hard to hold on to the wire or to straighten it from the spool, I want to show you another way that I straighten my wire. I take my plastic mallet and I just start moving it along my uh, bench block. And as you can see, what I'm doing is I lay it flat on the, uh, the bench block and then any areas that are not actually touching the block, I tap with the mallet. You have to keep moving it around and sizing it up and make sure that you hit your wire in the middle of the bench block, not on the edges, because that'll leave a mark. It's noisy. But we've got a pretty straight, now we've got a pretty straight piece of wire. And that'll make the creation of the frame a little bit simpler. So how do we create the frame? First thing you do is you take your chain nose pliers and your ruler. 
you want to give yourself about an inch and a half and make a 90 degree bend like that. And working close to the end of your uh, pill bottle, again, I'm working close to the end because the end is about an inch and a half. And that's the final diameter that I'm, I'm hoping to get. And what you do is you hold, you brace it against the bottle, the wire against the bottle like this, and you start pressing it around. And you keep pressing it around until you get all the way to, to the back to where you started again. You switch it around so you can continue pulling that down. So now you've got something that looks like this. Then the next thing you do is you go back in and you hold it and you gently, gently push this back because you want it to go straight up from the center. Now you kind of have to eyeball this and I guarantee you this is easier to do now than to try and straighten it up after you've um, wound your wire and completed your wire wrapped loop. But that's looking looking better. And you want a 90 degree bend. So you put your thumbnail in against where the two wires intersect and you pull that out straight. So now I've got a nice 90 degree angle. Okay. Now I'm going to flip this over towards me. So the, um, the bottom piece of wire is, is facing me. And that's just to help me get a little bit of leverage. Now you'll notice it's sort of slid down a little bit. That's normal. Just keep working your way back up to the top again. So your, uh, your uh, circle ends up more the measurement you want. And then you push because you need to wrap this around now and you push and you keep pushing until you wound around. I like to go about four times. Now, before I take that off, I'm going to do a couple of things. First thing I'm going to do is get my nylon jaw pliers again. And I'm going to push, sorry, wrong direction. I'm going to push this a little bit around and now I'm going to cut that off. Remembering to keep the side of the cutters that you want um, the flat side close to the um, actual work. I'm going to go in there now with my chain nose pliers and give that a tiny little pinch. Now if you slide this off, you can go back in with your chain nose pliers then and just go down like this to make sure your wrap is a little bit tighter. Then put it back on your mandrel again. Now, I want you to look at this. Do you see the way those two things are kind of out of plane there? There's a bit of a curve there. I like to go in and give it a nip with the nylon jaw pliers right down at the bottom because I like to try and bring those things in so they're a little bit closer to in the same plane. And that will become apparent why that's important when we start putting the wire knitting on. Okay, so now you've got something that looks like this. The next decision you have to make is how you want this pendant to hang. Do you want to make a loop that goes this way so something can thread right through, whether it's a piece of leather or a chain? Or do you want a, an, a loop that's in the same plane as the larger loop? And in which case you would attach it to a cord or a chain using jump rings. For the purposes of our exercise today, um, since this is the style of pendant I tend to make, I'm going to keep this in the plane that um, this first loop is in. So going back with my pill bottle, and the pill bottle now is serving to support the curve that you've got here. What I do is I go in and using my fingernail as a brace, I push down so I've got my 90 degree angle there. Next thing you want to do is you want to give this a tap or two with um, 
Let me get some of this stuff out of the way. You want to give this a tap or two with your, um, with your mallet. Now it's important when you're tapping this, if you look at this bench block, all the edges are quite uh, square and sharp except for one. Look for the um, edge that has a bit of a, uh, a rounding to it. And I tend to brace up against that. Main reason for that is if I accidentally hit too close to the edge with my mallet, I'm less likely to get a nasty indentation in my work. The reason I'm hammering the dickens out of this right now is I'm trying to hard work harden it. And that's not all the hammer work we're going to use with this, but I want it to be a little bit harder before I start to curve this piece. Now I've got more wire there than I need, but it's better to have more wire than not enough. If you start making the same size pendant frame over and over again, you're going to figure out pretty quick how much wire you need. Using my uh, stepped pliers, wrap and tap, I'm going to bring my wire around the top of the, uh, the top mandrel. And as you can see, I have way too much wire there. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut some of that off. And now I'm going to come back in and I'm going to keep going around. Now we're almost there. You keep curving your wire until the wire is basically 90 degrees to the top of your, um, uh, of your pendant frame here. And at the very end point, sorry, square nose pliers are better for this. I wiggle it in. So it's sort of teardrop shaped, but that gives a nice effect. Nice little teardrop shape. Now comes the fun part. I like to uh, texture my frames and to flatten them a little bit. Not only does this um, work harden them, it also gives it a nice effect because you create little facets uh, you, little indents in the, uh, in the surface of the wire that will reflect the light differently and it can be quite pleasant to look at. First thing I'm going to do though is take another look at this. Yeah, I think I want to give this one more nip. Now you see what I mean? That's now sticking out just ahead of the, um, just ahead of the, the bale itself. So maybe instead of the, the pliers, I'll just give it a little tap. Now it doesn't stick out in front anymore. See? All right, that's the curved edge of my, um, of my bench block. So now we're just going to flatten a little bit. And now taking the uh, ball peen end, I'm going to create some texture here. It's important to hold this down while you're tapping as it'll prevent the wire from curling up around. You want to get that texturing up as close as you can to the top. I'm going to get one more tap over here to see if I can bring that up. Okay, now I'm going to tap the bale to flatten it just a little bit. And I'm also going to give it a little bit of texture, just because I like that. Okay. Now, take your plastic mallet again. And there you have a pendant frame that's ready to start knitting with. It's literally that simple. 
we will worry about further finishing once we get the knitting done. Anyway, now you have a pendant frame ready to go. I hope you'll join me with the next video where I show you how to fill this with Viking wire knitting. Thanks for dropping by. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my channel. It'll help me keep doing what I like doing. See you again soon.